Um, welcome to our four week tutorial. We're going to be doing some seascapes today and I'm going to show you how to draw some clouds um, a little bit differently to how we would usually draw them. Um, I know clouds are quite hard and from experience, lots of people have been a bit unsure about how to do them. So I'll teach you a few little bits and bobs throughout the start. And then at the end, we should put together a little seascape. So I'm just using pencil and paper and I've got a rubber if I need it. Um, nothing special, but let's get started. Okay, so I'm just gonna show you a few little bits that you can follow along. Um, we're gonna learn to do some small waves. So not like a big crashing wave, but just some smaller waves um, such as these ones. So I think everyone should recognize these. So what I'm doing there, and this is just the first step, so that's not finished. It's not the finished product. So if everyone wants to grab a pencil, I've just got a H pencil, which is one you might use for a school exam. So it doesn't matter. And just start doing some little triangles like that, essentially, but a little bit curved. And then just overlap different sizes. You can do some wider ones. You can do some taller ones. And just put a few of those together and layer them just across. This isn't going to end up to be a picture. This is just a practice. So just have a go with me. You can do a few behind just by themselves. You can do like a little one. If you've got questions too, pop them in the comments. But this is a really, really effective technique that helps with starting to draw some water. So just have a go at that. I'll give you a few minutes and just try your best at just layering some of those. Try some different sizes, pop them in different spots. Um, maybe as you go to the back, you might want to get a bit smaller. Just try that. Oh, it's nice. I can see people saying good morning. It's really nice to see people coming back as well. Okay. Hey, Liv, yeah, we've got a lot of people on here that are, um, are back for their fourth round. Beautiful. Um, Linda with a Y and Rex. Tony is back. Um, I don't recognise Wendy, but I th well, it says Wendy's here, and I think she has been involved for some of the for some of the sessions. So welcome, Wendy. Um, got f quite a few people on at the moment, so that's really nice to see. And um, we were really excited to see everybody's progress photos during the week. Um, I don't know if you got a chance to jump on, Liv, but they are looking fantastic. Those flowers. Oh, they're beautiful. Thank you for continuing to post all of last week's. And it doesn't matter if you missed last week, Wendy, because um, we have them posted up on the library's YouTube and you can just go on the library page and just view those live videos again. So there's plenty of opportunity to revisit those. So I hope everyone's going well with just doing a few of these. Um, yeah, so try different sizes. Um, you can even do some softer ones with some more rounded tops, but I think that the pointed tops look a little bit better. And then what I'm going to do, um, I'm going to start almost at the top, um, maybe just a little bit, little bit off. 
and I'm going to go out in that direction. So we're going to pretend the light is coming from here. Um, and just, you can add, um, increase the width, width. So this is quite wide. Um, you can add some thinner lines just at the top. And I hope you can see that, but just start. And they can be quite squiggly and just start adding another line in the middle. So you can start at the point or just off and just do that to all of them. And I'm just gonna zoom in a little bit. That's what it's looking like at the moment. So I'm just adding these lines in there. So to do it in a big, in a big example, this is from our 2D wave. And then by doing that, we're turning it into a 3D wave. And they're just the little ones that sit on the water, even on a calm day. And they're quite easy to do and they come out quite effective. So just keep going with that and then um, I'll move on to the next step with those but you can essentially fill a whole page with them and um, get smaller and smaller towards the back. And then just continue adding them on. So by the end of this, we should be able to use all of these techniques and um, be able to draw um, a really nice seascape. can do some on their lonesome, like just ones by themselves, just to fill in the gaps. And just keep joining them together so you can even do um, something like this. So one and then go back up and do a second one and then just having them linked in the middle. But by doing this, um, it just creates that extra bit of realism in there. I think this is a really easy one to do as well because you can just use the same pattern and just try different sizes as we go. So I'm just going to do two more minutes just to keep, um, just to allow you to do a bit more of that and then we'll move on to the next step. Think about size, um, how many you want in a group, um, maybe you do a big bunch of them and then add some little ones here and there. So I've got some by themselves, even just some triangles. You don't even need to add the third bit, just, just little bits. And just as we go, if you've got questions or comments about how you're finding it, 
just pop it in below and um, I'll be more than happy to answer that or try my best to see um, if I can change what I'm using to answer your question. Got a few more good mornings here, Liv. We've got uh, Linda with an eye. We've got Linda, we've got both Lindas back today. Um, Kerry's back on. Good morning, Jeff. Great to see you back. <laughs> So we've definitely got some um, repeat artists, so it's great to see. And if you're, if you're new, um, feel free to jump on and say hello. Um, if you've got any questions, put them in the comments. And if you want to send through any progress photos, um, just send them through to the Wallandilly Library um, Facebook Messenger and we'll start posting them. Thank you. So... The next step, if you're not done that, that's okay because it's just a practice. So it doesn't matter if you've got lots or just a few. Um, we're just gonna start. So as I said, the light is coming from this way, which means- The library um, Facebook messenger and we'll start posting them. Thank you. I thought that was my computer being funny. Um, so the light's coming from this way. And as you can see, we've got a few sections which are facing the light. So by putting this line in here, we've actually got essentially one third or one half or a quarter of our initial waves like this. This bit here, this is gonna be our lightest part because that's facing the light. So what I want us to do is on this side, the other side, I want us to start just adding a bit of shading in there. It can be hatching, it can be cross hatching. Um, I prefer hatching just so that we can go in the direction of the wave. So I hope you can see that clear enough. And I'm just going quite softly towards the bottom, but just add some shading to all of those little waves. So that's what I've come up with for my first one. You can bring some from the point and just go in a triangle direction. You can do some blending as well. I think that's really effective too. Just like that. Um, for our hatching or blending, you can just color in one half of the wave. It doesn't have to be perfect too. This is going to be our darkest side. So just go, go along and just add some shading and then even color down to the next wave. So here I'm coloring down to the top of my next wave. I hope you can see that. So I've got a wave here and I've just colored down to the top of that. I haven't colored into that, but I've colored to the top. And then just start as we go, just adding more. And it should start to give our waves some dimension. I really like blending for this one because you can cover a large surface area at a time. So I'm just gonna continue doing that and just shade down in between as well. So I'm just, just adding some pencil in between and then moving into my next, into my next wave. Not too fussed about darks and softs yet, but if you can see bits where you think, oh, that's a bit darker, um, an example of that could be when you're just above another wave. So here I'm above this wave and I'm just gonna go a little bit darker. And that's just because the wave in front is in front and we're just gonna give it some shadow. I 
hope you can see it starting to come a little bit together. And you might just be happy with the first step and not want to do any shading. Um, and that's fine too. Um, if you've got kids as well or grandkids, um, you can teach them the first step. And then if they want to continue on to some shading, um, that's perfectly fine. They look really good either way. Um, I think shading just adds a little bit more realism to what we're doing. And it's good practice too. So where I'm, become, where I'm coming behind a wave and I can see one in front, I'm just gonna shade a little bit darker. So I've shaded darker at the bottom here and at the bottom here, just because there's a wave in front. I hope that makes some sense. And just keep adding some shading so the wind's blowing. Just colour in in between the waves too, um, just very softly. And I'm just going in between in a horizontal direction as well, so going side to side. You've got a few waves in the cluster, like really close together, and you want to differentiate them, just shade one of them a little bit darker, just to make them clearly different. Just have a play around. So it might be a little bit hard now. Um, and as you go along, you might find it a bit easier. Um, So there's not really a right or wrong way of doing it because the ocean's always changing. Feel free to comment if you've got any questions. If you've got some progress pictures, feel free to comment or send them through to Wall and Dilly. Um, and I'd love And if you're having trouble, it's okay too, because it does take a long time, um, especially with waves, just to get used to how to draw all the different shapes. I'm just going back to do a bit of hatching too, just so I've got a few techniques in there to show you. So it doesn't matter what you really do. I'm 
I think the hatching gives it a really cool um, texture as well. I think I really like using hatching for waves. So when you finish that, it's okay if you're not. Um, we're gonna go on to the other side. So we've left a bit blank and we're just gonna shade that lightly as well, but in the opposite direction. So we're not gonna give it too much color or darkness. We're just gonna go lightly and very softly shading in that direction. So just enough so you can see some differentiation. So I've colored these two. So there's the darker side and lighter and you might do some light hatching. So there's bits of white in between. Um, and that's, that usually turns out quite well as well. So just very softly coloring the other side and in the angle or direction um, that the light's coming from. So we want to shade in this direction. So going down. I might make this line a bit darker too. So the line in between, I might make the left hand side just that little bit darker in the middle, just to give it some more depth. And just keep shading as we go, very softly. making sure that this line in the middle is just a little bit darker on the left-hand side. So I might go over the top of it just a little bit and just, just build up that contrast. So I hope you're seeing yours turn into some waves. Um, feel free just to comment as well. Um, say, like, tell me how you're going. Um, if you're finding it a little bit difficult or if you're actually thinking it looks better than you thought or you're just having a good go. I'm really excited to see how these turn out for you. At the moment, Liv, we've just got a few more hellos. Beautiful. Um, so we've got Susie and Elton. Um, so I think everybody's busy. Busy drawing. Busy drawing, yeah. Are you doing one too, Vicky? Um, no, I'm correcting children's store, uh, classwork <laughs> with my work from, home, uh, work from home slash schooling from home set up. <laughs> I think I might jump on with my kids a little bit later when it goes up on YouTube and do it. Sounds amazing. So I'm just going to give you a few more minutes just to keep filling those in. If you've ever tried to draw the ocean too, or you haven't, pop it in the comments too. I'm interested to see um, who has or hasn't. I know lots of people get a bit turned off by drawing the ocean just because um, I think when I first started, I didn't know where to start. But I think it's easier than it looks.
just a pattern. So we've got a few uh, comments now, Liv. Mm -hmm. Jeff thinks he has a series of pyramids. <laughs> And Tony's saying that she thinks that hers look more like mountains at the moment. Okay. Um, I think a way to fix that as well is just by um, even joining some more together um, in front and behind each other. Um, it's just with practice as well. So, um, yeah, you might think it might need a few more or a few less um, but just in the bigger picture when they're all bunched up together um, they sort of turn a little bit into waves so um, with the pyramids as well um, just make sure that it's got that curve in the edge so not too straight a nice curve on both sides I hope that helps a little bit and with this line in the middle um, a nice squiggly line is really good or a curved line also helps. They are quite hard to do as well. So thank you for jumping on and giving it a go. A few more comments now, Liv. Linda mm -hmm. with an eye has said that um, she hasn't sketched water before and she thinks that your method is a great place to start. Beautiful. And then Kerry says that this is her first attempt and it really shows. Oh, um, it's quite hard. I'll have to send in a photo of my first seascape versus my, versus my um, most recent seascape and show you that would um, be great. how different they are. Um, I usually paint seascapes, so drawing is a lot harder, um, I think. Um, but definitely have a practice and it's a really good place to start. So... Just have a few more minutes on those and then I'll show us, I'll show everyone um, just a quick version of some clouds that would be really nice in a seascape too. And then I'll move on to a wave. So you'll sort of get bombarded this morning with a few, um, a few little things, but you can always return back on the YouTube um, and yeah, have another look at that. But I'll definitely post my first verse, my last seascape and that's over the a period of nine years and um they're very very different from the first time to the most recent and um it's just practice two, two more minutes on just those uh, matter if they're not perfect because that's just our little practice. Okay, so I'm just gonna flip over my page. If you've got photos, um, definitely like Linda just said, um, pop your work in progress in the library's messenger. I'm really, really see those. Um, I think everyone did really well with the flowers last week. I mean, they turned out really, really well. Okay. Just fixing up my page. I'm not very good on the camera, sorry. Here we go. So for clouds, um, and I'm gonna go into doing some water as well with this. So we're gonna start maybe halfway through your paper and just do a line just a very soft line as straight as you can you can use a ruler if you like um, 
I tend to not use one sometimes just because I think the horizon often isn't completely straight, but just for practicing, um, I'm not gonna use a ruler. Just do your straight line. And it doesn't have to be perfect. As you can see, I'm going over a few times. For clouds, what I want us to do is I'll do one first and then have a go. Um, I'm pressing not too hard and I'm just going to be doing getting taller and taller. And just do a squiggly sort of line like that. It doesn't have to be perfect. But I hope you can see it. And then softer than we've done this top, just very, very do a straighter line, not too straight um, at the bottom. And then you might do a smaller one. the top just like that so um, try your own design for going around or you can try and copy mine um, usually gets from thinner to wider and then thinner again and then I might just add some small little wispy ones through the top. So very, very faint line at the bottom and a bit darker at the top. So have a go at drawing that. Got a few photos come through, Liv. Beautiful. Um, I know that we've, I think there's been two that have been put up. Mm -hmm. And they were, Linda, Linda with an I. Okay. And Linda with a Y, both Lindas. <laughs> so hopefully you let us know if we've got them around the wrong way, Linda and Linda. We do apologise. But I think we've got it around the right way this time. trying to load up these photos just keep going with those clouds um don't be too um worried about doing those because um yeah just don't um don't stress about things being in the right place or the wrong place because um a cloud is never the same again really so just do what you think oh the waves look amazing beautiful i really loved I really love how um, Linda with an I has done um, a lot bunched up together. They look really, really good. And um, Linda with a Y has done really nice shading too. So I really like them. Cool. So just a few more minutes on those clouds and then I'll show you the next a little bit. And um, at the bottom, do I think what people usually do with clouds is is these, and this is the next step up. This is the next step up from going from this to a more realistic cloud, and um, that's more based on the shape of it and um, the differentiation. So having some little ones in there, having some big ones. And just having the different shapes as well. And um, with shading, which we're going to add, um, I think you'll be really surprised at how well you'll be able to do some clouds too. So when you've drawn your clouds, um, we're going to use the blending technique. You can use, I'll do hatching for my smaller one, but 
softly get the side of your pencil and just throughout just add a little bit of shading so just little spots really lightly and you can choose where to pop it um, and just add some shading but in different shapes so as you can see here I'm going in a rounded direction so have a quick go um, don't stress too much if it's not what you'd like it to look like um, yeah I'm just gonna add very softly And then if you're doing hatching, so I'm just gonna demonstrate hatching in the one above. Just choose little patches, do larger lines, some thinner lines. Um, if you're new to these tutorials as well, um, in the first week I explained some techniques. So you might hear some words such as hatching, cross hatching, blending, um, maybe a little bit of dotting. We're actually gonna use some dotting later. Um, that's in our first week tutorial and that will be on YouTube if you wanna recap over some of those techniques. Um, but yeah, just have a fiddle and do a little bit of shading in the clouds. And then for the bottom, I'm actually gonna shade that a little bit darker. So I know we left that quite light, but I'm just gonna give that its shadow. So we're gonna pretend the sun's coming from the top and this is the bottom of the cloud where we've got some of that darker, even gray colors in those clouds. Just blend up. I'm going in the same direction, giving that a um, just shading, um, it can look like cross hatching too. You can do the hatching at the bottom like this. But just have a try and even start coloring in those clouds at top add some smaller ones as well and they can be different shapes more rounded and you can add in some more shading so where I've already gone in and done some of those lighter shadows in the cloud I'm just going to go back over and just darken some of them so especially on this side towards where it's touching the line I'm just going to go in and just blend some darker bits as we go These bits of shading will make our clouds look a bit more 3D. I think blending is a really, really nice um, technique to use when doing clouds. That's because clouds are usually very, very soft and um, you won't have those harsh lines in there. So you can keep shading. Um, and where it's a bit whiter, you can just color in a little bit more. And just color just with the cloud softly and want to add some darker shades just go over again and just make it a little bit darker I'm just going from darker to light
So just keep drawing with those and um, I'll give you a few more minutes. And um, yeah, it's clouds. So if you'd like as well, you can color in the sky a bit darker around the clouds, um, but I think it looks okay. Um, as a white page and some clouds, you can add some light shading. Um, it might take a while to color in the sky, but you can do that if you like. Um, I'm just gonna move on after this to doing some more of the ocean. And you'll actually have a cute little drawing after this as well. So um, in learning clouds and another technique, we're gonna just continue on the same page. I hope you're finding those okay. So continue with those clouds if you'd like. Um, you can add some darker bits if you think it needs a little bit more shadow. Um, you can really play around. If you'd like to rub out some bits as well to make them lighter, feel free to go back with a rubber and just rub out some bits um, where you've shaded and you think it doesn't need as much shading. But yeah, I'm just gonna go back at the bottom and really just add some darkness there just to really show that that's the bottom of our cloud and just bring that shading up. So while you do that as well, if you're finished, awesome. If you're not, don't worry, keep going. Um, the next step's quite easy. I'm just going to go over this line here. Really defined, so. Really go over that line. If you've got a pencil such as a 4B or a 6B or a 5B, even a 2B, um, it's really, really good for making this a little bit darker. So this is our horizon, mine's not completely straight. You can try and make it straighter if you'd like for yours, or if you're happy, you can just leave it. So that's my horizon. Press as dark as I can. So if you've got a HB pencil and you can't go too dark, that's fine, just go as dark as you can. And what we're gonna do, we're just going to start just adding some lines close together, just like hatching all the way across. So small lines, we're just going to link them together. All the way at the back. So I'm actually this sort of a thin, Make this far of really dark. Because if you can imagine in our coloured world, we darkest blue, light, um, and then our lightest, which almost clear because you can see the bottom. So we're going to use this really dark. and our dark blue in the ocean so just like that so have a go and just finish your cloud if you'd like and start just adding some lines really close together all the way across our horizon just with our 
darkest tone. So press quite hard down and just continue adding lines along our horizon. Liv, I think there's a few more um, photos have gone up Beautiful. on Facebook, some progress shots. Um, oh, oh, nice. Everyone's done really well with those waves. And Jeff, I like how Jeff's done um, the lighter and the darker. Oh, these are amazing. Really, really, really nice. Good. Jeff, they look really good too, really natural at the bottom. Yeah, very natural. Tony's look really nice. He's got really small ones at the back. And Susie. Like the landscape on Susie's. Beautiful. Really great job, everybody. I'm actually really, really happy um, <laughs> with those. Everyone's picked that up really well because um, yeah, it took me so long to be able to draw seascapes or even paint them. So now I'm really, really stoked with them. I hope you join in in the next four weeks as well, because we're going to be doing some trees and landscapes and some faces. So that'll be really, really cool. We've sort of gone from still lifes and the ocean to faces in eight weeks. So you guys will be pro drawers of everything. I'm excited. Things, what's been really cool Liv, is we've seen everybody come back week after week so mm. and we seem to get a new person or a new few every week as well so that's that's really exciting um, because we really weren't sure how this was going to work we've all had to adapt during COVID um, and we're really really happy with the the positive feedback and the interaction that we get to have with you guys. And thank you, Vicky, for jumping on every week and being the little voice behind our Zoom, which is awesome. The, visit, the Wizard of Oz. Wizard of Oz. One day I may show my face, but it won't be until um, <laughs> I visit the beautician <laughs> and the hairdresser. So just keep going with those and feel free to comment as well, just because um, I'm not sure how long it's as well just because I can't see what you're doing to move on um, just so I don't move on too quickly so it feels well just to quickly comment and say okay I'm up to where you are or ready for the next step um, and I'll move on for you so for those who are up to here or finished what you can do ne next is just like in our hatching of our shapes, we're just gonna do what we did. And as I said, the in the lines, the lighter it's gonna live. I think so as we like, go down. Sorry, Liv. I think there's a there might be a little bit of an issue with your connection because you keep dropping out. Oh yeah, it's just said it's unstable. Sorry. Um. Oh, sorry. Let's try and fix that. Okay. Sorry, guys, I was trying to fix my internet. Okay, it should be a little bit better. So let me know if it drops out again. Um, so as we go down, I want us to stop maybe about here. So it doesn't matter where on your page, if you've gone further or 
um, you haven't gone as far, that's fine. Um, but just as we go down, we're just gonna have our lines quite far apart down here compared to really close together up there. So just as we move down, just have these lines apart gradually. So dark here, the lines are really close together. And just as we go down, just slowly make the gaps a little bit wider. And just continue with that. And I'm just going in a back and forth motion. really see that these lines are now really far apart and they're all connecting in some way and then as we come down here some of them might not be connecting we might just have floating lines Then you might, if you want to go back over some parts and think, oh, I want some bits a bit darker, that's fine to just go back over the top. This is not, not a very um, precise technique. I'm just going in the same direction. So we're not gonna go up or down or diagonal. Um, it doesn't matter if you do go diagonal in some bits that um, just aim just to go in that left to right or right to left direction. It's cold outside. Feel free as well to comment um, at the end or during um, what you would like to see as a tutorial. Um, I know we've added seascapes and faces but just for any future tutorials that might come about. Just um, I'd love to hear what you'd like to learn to draw. Someone said their waves looked like mountains. Maybe we could draw some mountains. And there's plenty of options out there. But yeah, just keep going. And I hope you can sort of see how this is a really, really easy way to actually create a horizon and um, make it look like a beach, essentially, or an ocean. And we're just going to stop when we get to there. So when you feel like it's right to stop, just make sure you've got a lot of white at the bottom. Liv, I think we have some busy beavers because everybody um, seems to be working on their clouds or their horizon. Mm. Not many comments at the moment, but I love the idea of the hills um, because something that you, or the mountains, something you may not know about Wallandilly is that we're, we're, we're known for our rolling hills. Oh, beautiful. Um, and you'll see it in our council um, logo, particularly our old logo, but our new logo. Um, that uh, I guess W, what you see is actually supposed to represent the rolling hills. Oh, that I love are that. Really representative of our area. So beautiful. Um, Linda's just commented that she'd love to learn how to draw animal fur. Mm. That sounds hard. <laughs> um, and. Something that, um, and I can send you some photos, Liv, something that's um, quite significant to um, Wallandilly is, um, uh, I think it's called the, vi the viaduct in Picton. Have you seen those before? No, I haven't. I'll, um, I'll send you a photo through. It's um, beautiful. It sits in Picton, and I think a train goes across it from memory. Um, oh, amazing. And it's 
beautiful, beautiful architecture, really, really old architecture. And um, yeah, we've definitely, and we've also got some really old bridges and um, lots of stone and all sorts of things like that in Wallandilly. So mm. maybe, maybe thinking about like, yeah, some more landscapey kind of drawings. That sounds amazing. I'd be really excited for that. Beautiful. Thank you for everyone for posting pictures during the week last week. Um, I saw lots of your photos, got lots of comments as well. And um, yeah, they were really, really good. I was really happy with how people just kept going with the flowers. And I think Linda did lots of daisy drawing of different angled daisies. So they were really amazing. Um, I'd love to see how these seascapes go. Okay, so I'm just going to give a few more minutes for that and then we're going to learn um, how to do a little bit of a bigger wave, a breaking wave. And that, um, these ones are really, really fun. Oh, a few more comments. Jeff would like to, yeah, he likes the idea of old farm buildings and heritage buildings. Cool. So um, maybe a bit of homework for you, Liv. Mm. Um, if you jump on our Visit Wall and Dilly um, uh, website page, yeah. you'll see some of our historic buildings. And I was right, it is the viaduct on Stone Quarry Creek. Um, we also have the um, train museum. We have some really mm. old trains in Thirlmere. I have to do a big trip up to Wall and Dilly again soon. When we're allowed. Yeah, <laughs> um, I actually did, Jeff, a art course or a drawing course and we went around Hill End, which is an old mining town in New South Wales, and for seven days we just sat in front of old buildings and um, got to draw them, so they were really, really amazing. So I think doing buildings would be a really, really good idea for a drawing tutorial even when you can go out for a walk, if you can um, take photos of any buildings um, and take them home to draw. It's a really, really good thing to do. So I'm gonna move on in one second, just give you one more minute just to finish up that. And then we're gonna go onto a breaking wave, which is really exciting because this is my favorite bit. So what we're going to do now is we're going to start with a line going maybe about that long. So if everyone can do that, just one, um, it's quite a dark line, doesn't have to be completely straight going just along there. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna start maybe about halfway and go from really thin and then we're gonna start bringing that down just like that. We're gonna stop there. my favorite thing to teach and I haven't taught it before. Um, it's just such a really simple wave and I think you'll all be experts really soon. So this is awesome. And you notice with this space at the back, that you can start adding if you wanted to your waves that we previously learned. So you can even rub out a bit. Um, don't worry about doing it now, but you can rub out a bit. And because it's closer to your eye, you can start adding those waves there and you can see how it all comes together. So we've done a patching, getting further apart and you can even leave this almost blank and then add our triangle waves. So don't worry about that now, but that's just an idea that can be in your head for your next drawings, even at home. 
So when you've done this, I want us to actually maybe bring this all the way across. So this way, starting from the edge of our paper. Okay. We're just gonna extend this line. Sorry, there we go. We're gonna extend line and we're gonna bring it down in the same direction and the same angle that we've done our other one. So nice and soft, just like that. So when you've done that, now we're just gonna come at the bottom. And just like our clouds, very dark at the bottom and not exactly straight, but not too curved and just join those two up essentially. Just like that. When you've done that, what I want us to do is just at this point here, we're gonna curve in the opposite direction. So it's sort of gonna be an oval. And we're gonna join up here with there. I think my Sorry, I think my paper's disappeared. So I'm just gonna fix that and add it back. No oh, problems. Um, Do you want me to add? Is it okay if I get the meeting? I, if you just... Um, I'll add it in the comments, Liv. Add, yeah. Yeah, I'll add it through. Oh, you want the ID? Yes, please. Yeah, okay. Sorry, everyone, a few technical <laughs> issues. Sorry, Liv, I've just got to find it. Mm -hmm. I'll send it to you in an email. Thank you. Sorry, everyone. Keep, keep drawing. Sorry, everyone. We've just got a few technical issues, but we should have Liv back on pretty soon. So feel free to keep sending any um, any photos, any progress photos through. Um, if you've got any comments, feel free to um, pop them in the comments section. And I think we've almost got her back. There's her. Here we go. Here we go. I've just spotlighted that one for you, Liv, just the Thank paper. You. So we're still waiting on you. I think your camera to come back on now. Okay. Um, okay. Let's get this going. Beautiful. That's better. Okay. Sorry, everyone. Um, okay. So once you've done this, so join up these two, I guess, little bits here. What I want us to start doing is 
shading under this line here. So under there. And I want us to blend in a direction where it's like this. So, so I want us to go. Just shade um, darker in the center there. So right here, this is where our shadow is going to be. And then as we go out a little bit lighter, but not too light as well. So this is still going to be quite dark as well. And then I hope you soon can see how we're going to build up a wave from this. Okay. Just like that. As well, if you'd like to get the shading um, neater, I'm just doing an example. So my shading might not be perfect. Um, I'm just going to darken along here and in here as well. So make that quite prominent there as well. So we're pretending our water is getting pulled from here and it's getting sucked up and then thrown around like that. So that's how our waves will move. It's pulling the water from this direction because it's breaking this side it's going upwards and then over and that's why our line's going like that Just give a little bit more time to do that there. And just keep adding some photos too when you're free. I'd really love to see um, where everyone's up to. Oh, here one. Yeah, I think there's a few more up there now, Liv, oh. if you have a look. Those clouds look amazing. So just keep, like you'll notice the difference between, between clouds like that and um, how we normally tempt clouds. Um, it's a really simple way to try different shapes and different shading. And I think it looks really good, Linda. There we go. Okay. So when you've, oh, why is that? video gone. Um, sorry, guys. There we go. So when you've done this bit, what I want us to start to do is here, just like with the clouds, we're going to start small here. And then I want us to get bigger and even bigger off the page. So I'd actually get us to go off the page there and just bring that out. Right, you can bring similar to what we did with the clouds. It doesn't have to be very neat. Um, if you don't want to rub out that bit, which I just did, you can bring it back down here as well. So it doesn't matter if you go off the page. I think that looks really cool. Like it's splashing. Um, otherwise, don't worry about rubbing that out and just fit in some foam there. So that's our foam splashing up. When you've done that too, um, similar to the clouds, add some shading. So this is where these two tie in and I think it's really, really cool how you can link what we've done with the clouds 
into our water. Um, at the bottom is going to be where it's darkest, exactly like our clouds. So I'm going to shade that the darkest. I'm going to have it going in this direction because that's where it's splashing. Don't be too careful or neat with this. Um, just add some shading here and there. And I'm just going to blend similar to the clouds up as well. So you can leave some bits of white you Can add some darker bits here and there. Add some cross hatching if you like. So I'm adding some cross hatching in there. Um, you've got so many techniques that you can utilize in creating our waves. I'm not going to do too much. You can go as detailed or as um, minimal as you like. Of course, we'll have some water coming along here. So like our triangles or our lines. And when you've done that, we're just going to shade upwards, quite dark from this bit here. So if we outline to where the wave stops around our whitewash, then we can start to shade in an upward direction and curving at the same angle that these two lines are. So. Not too far as well. We're going to just go dark. And then we're going to do the same at the top. So we're going to actually come down at the top as well. So just don't worry if you're not up to the same spot as me, but just take your time. So dark, dark, and then in the middle, we're going to be lighter. So as you go, just shade. It's not going to be as dark as in the middle. That's where I want it to be the darkest. And just shade in a downward direction. Slowly leave this quite light in the middle. Okay, so I might just shade that light just so I don't make it any darker and just blend. So like we did in our techniques, we went from dark to light to dark. Um, and just keep blending in that same direction. Liv, Susie's just asked, um, remember she's done her page in landscape, so it hasn't gone off the page and she's wondering how she finishes, finishes the wave off because it's, not going uh, off the page. Okay. Um, so I'm going to draw that down here. So what you can do is you can just bring that whitewash back down. So like the clouds, we go up and we splash up and then just bring it back down. Um, to a very thin line. So I hope that sort of looks okay and you can sort of get bigger and then get smaller like that. I hope that makes some sense or looks okay, um, that's one way you could do it. Another way you could do it, Susie, is by adding some rocks. So you could add like off your landscape. Um, some rocks where it hits up and splashes to and that will make up for um, not going off the edge. So 
there's a few things you could do. Um, that's splashing against some makeshift rocks there. Um, this is a rock, I guess, or a mountain. And this is the wave going up like normal and it's hitting that. So there's a few things you can do. Um, but yeah, otherwise you can just come up and then go back down like that. Hope that makes sense. Um, yeah. But just keep shading as we go. So from dark, just above our foam, to light, and then to dark again. Just in that same direction. I'm so sorry if you can hear some background noise. There's some people building near my house and I'm currently outside. Okay, so after you've done that shading, don't worry if you're not done now, um, cause you can just keep going um, towards the end or um, even after, but what we're going to do now is at the top here, we're going to go like a zigzag all the way across and we're going to leave a little gap at the top and this doesn't have to be perfect either. So we're going to give that a little bit of a zigzag and just shade again on an angle because with that angle, we can continue going down. So don't go this way. Um, go from right corner to left corner. Okay. And then same with the bottom. We're going to do that shading in that opposite direction. So we're going to go this way at the top and this way at the bottom. And that's again, not as a drawing technique, it's just due to the physics of the actual ocean pulling up. And that's following this arrow up and then we're going to go in that direction. And you can actually, if you want, draw those in Just like that. So shade at the bottom and follow those arrows if you can't remember which direction your shading should go. And then at the top as well. All the way at the bottom. And just even under where your whitewash was. Liv, um, Susie really liked the idea of the rock, so it looks like that's what she's gonna she's gonna do. Thanks, Susie. And anyone else, if you feel like if you would like to um, add rocks in there, um, you can add some mountains up the back, so like up here, and you can shade those quite dark. I know one of the beaches near me has one on each side, and you can color those in. I'm just throwing a few ideas out so that you can have a play around. It's going to be one of my mountains done very quickly. You can always refer back to the video and pause it if you'd like to add some more. Yeah. 
but yeah, there's plenty of options that you can really do as well. Um, when you've done those shadows, we're just going to shade again, like up here, that's where our dark to light to dark comes from. So we're going to go dark to light to dark and we're going to go in this direction, just like what we did there. We're going to keep following these lines. And I'm going to do it quickly just because I'm a little bit short for time just to do it all but just go all the way along and just continue that same shading so dark to light to dark just like that and you can even just keep adding these guides to follow you can shade each each section if you'd like so choosing this section to color in first keep going even after the tutorial if you haven't finished that's okay i won't be finishing mine um but yeah there's plenty of techniques that you can use and even i've got waves under here so use that technique and fill up that whole wave. Even go in a shade and just use those lines and you can just shade them and just add these in there as well. What we first did, our triangles. Again, like that. So there's plenty of things you can do. And at the bottom, just because it's darker at the bottom, just shade that out. Just in the direction of these lines. You can even do some cross, I mean, some hatching and just hatch those in as well. And finish all the way at the bottom. You can even add a curved line and that's going to be the end of your beach. So this is the sand. Sorry, mine's a bit messy. This is the sand and this can be the water. And you can just shade that out until you hit this mark there. So there's plenty of options you can do. Um, but yeah, there's some basics for drawing waves and some clouds you've got some horizon lines in there and um i think this is a really really effective wave that you can do it's quite simple you just start with the outline and then just add your shading so um a really good way to practice this is by going finding seascape pictures or wave pictures and just even tracing the outline and then going off the coloring in there's apps that you can use where you can make an image black and white and um you can try and draw off those um that's a really really good way to know oh which bit's darker or which bit which bit's lighter um just by going off okay this is a black and white picture and that really really helps so um if you're interested in doing that go online and find some ocean pictures um, even black and white, Google black and white ocean pictures, and they're really, really easy. And just try and copy those. Um, but yeah, just continue with that shading all the way along. And um, that finished once it's all shaded. Sorry, there was a lot to cover in that one, but I wanted to give you as many techniques and as many um, bits and pieces that you could be able to draw after this. Um, I might be able to, if you'd like, extend and maybe we could do different types of waves um, or a follow along wave drawing one day. Um, but yeah, this is a really, really um, simple but a really good looking wave that you can do. 
I think you've really pushed them to the max today, Liz. <laughs> but definitely right up until the last minute. Um, nice. And I think everybody's just been so involved with their drawings. So I look forward to everyone sending through. I know there's a couple of progress photos that have come through that will get posted up shortly. But, um, yeah, keep them coming. Um, but, yeah, we're pretty, we're pretty quiet on the comment front at the moment, but I actually think it's because you've kept everybody on their toes with all your different techniques. And This is a really, really hard one to do. Yeah. So it keeps involved. Yeah, but they look really great. The ones that are coming through uh, look mm. really fantastic. So feel free to keep sending them. Oh, yeah, um, I've also got a wave tattoo, so that's how much I like drawing the ocean. <laughs> Um, but I think that's that's all from us today. Mm. Um, so what I really recommend with this one is because I covered so much and didn't leave heaps of time to do the drawing, um, if you'd want to refer back or have any questions, I've been jumping onto the library page and liking lots of those progress shots. But if you've got questions, um, keep adding them in the comments, even during the week, and um, I'll go back and answer them personally if I can answer them. Um, that would be great. Some tips, so definitely refer back to the videos because um, you can pause and maybe find something that you didn't find or hear before. Um, but yeah, there's um, yeah, there's lots in there. So thank you for being patient with me and my technological issues today, and I'm really glad you all jumped on. So thank you. Just seeing if there's any last minute comments. I know Linda sent a, a photo, a progress photo through, and I know Jeff has as well. Yeah. So we'll work on getting those up. Um, but I think that's that's it. Amazing. I'll right. definitely send through to the Wall and Dilly Library my first and my last seascape that I've done. So. Oh, we would love to see that. That would be yeah. really cool. It's like yeah. a. 11 year old seascape versus a 21 year old seascape <laughs> yeah this takes practice and time excellent all right well thanks again Liv we really appreciate it what are we doing next week um next week oh what are we doing next week is that is that facial features or I think we're doing landscapes and um drawing trees next week so. oh excellent excellent yes. that's really good um a couple of comments so Jeff said thank you for today um, and I'm sure there'll be a few more thank yous that come through. So thank you for joining. Yeah, no worries. Well, hopefully everybody can tune in next week. Tony said thank you. I knew they'd start coming through. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, we'll see everyone again next week with your sharpened pencils and your paper. Sounds um, good. And yeah, thanks again, Liv. Thank you. Have a good week, everyone. Bye. Bye.